Hello, and welcome to the making of Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof, produced by the Lowell Milken Center for Music of American Jewish Experience at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music. I am Mark Kligman, director of the center, and I hold the Mickey Katz Endowed Chair in Jewish Music and serve on the faculty in the departments of Ethnomusicology and Musicology. We are thrilled to have you join us for music and conversation with tonight's very special guest, Zalman Malotek. To make sure that you know all about the programming related to music of the American Jewish experience, please make sure you're on our event email list. You'll find the link to the mailing list in the chat or simply Google UCLA Jewish Music and you'll find a link to our webpage. Upcoming programs to our calendar are as follows. We need the slide on uh, David Krakauer, who will be with us in our next Jewish Music Masterclass on March 2nd. Krakauer is widely considered one of the greatest clarinetists on the planet. Join us for this exciting Jewish Music Masterclass as Krakauer engages with attendees and shares the inspirations behind his conversation. Come, excuse me, his compositions. Remember Theodore Bikel, actor, activist, idealist. This tribute event is organized with the Dortot Center for Creativity in the Arts at the UCLA Hillel. Theodore Bikel wanted to be known as the singer of his people. In this program of storytelling and music, his wife, Amy Ginsburg Bikel, along with Peter Yero, Daniel Kahn and friends, pay tribute to the legendary artist, folk singer, civil rights peace and Jewish activist. This will take place on March 4th. We also are pleased to announce a special program on March 15th called For the Love of Opera, celebrating RBG's 88th birthday, a new operatic event that will showcase US Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg's favorite arias on what would have been her 88th birthday in partnership with the National Museum of American Jewish History in Opera Philadelphia. All these programs will be at 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Please see the link in the chat to our website and mailing list. You can also find our programs on our YouTube channel by just Googling Lowell Milken Center for Music of American Jewish Experience. We hope to see you at these events. Now on to tonight's program. The Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof is a groundbreaking production by the National Yiddish Theater Folkspina, which, as some has described, redefines Fiddler on the Roof. A production in Yiddish captivated the attention of New York theater goers, and I can say for me personally, was profoundly moving. Today, today's event is made possible by the Lowell Milken Center for Music of American Jewish Experience at the UCLA Herb Albert School of Music the UCLA Mickey Katz Endowed Chair in Jewish Music, and the UCLA Alan D. Levy Center for Jewish Studies. We are pleased to hear about this production with Zalman Malotek, internationally recognized authority of Yiddish folk and theater music, as well as a leading figure in the Jewish theater and concert worlds. For the past 20 years, he has been the artistic director and conductor of National Yiddish Theater Volksbühne. His vision brought the critically acclaimed award-winning Fiddler auf dem Dach, Yiddish, uh, excuse me, Fiddler on the Roof in Yiddish, directed by Joel Gray, for which he served as music director and brought this production to New York and will serve as the music supervisor for the international and national tours being planned. Zalman brought Yiddish in klezmer music to Broadway and off-Broadway stages in the past with two Tony-nominated productions. Those were the days and Drama Desk nominated America, The Golden Land. He serves as music director for most New York theater folks being a productions, including the New York Times critics pick The Sorcerers and the Drama Desk nominated musical The Golden Akala or The Golden Bride, as well as the Yiddish Pirates of Penzance. His music can be heard in over two dozen recordings and films. He has taught and performed all over the world and worked with countless singers, including Jan Pierce, Theodore Bikel, and Mandy Patinkin. Molotek has concertized widely 
and has taught workshops in many colleges. Mr. Malotek's deep roots in Yiddish culture, his elite musical education, his talent and passion for both have merged into a career that has revitalized the world of Yiddish music and theater. Zalman, it's a pleasure to have you join us and we're so happy to hear from you all about this amazing production. Welcome. Thanks, Mark. It's uh, very special to be here with you. Um, we were to have opened at the Amundsen uh, this past September. Um, there was a national tour plan. So this is a, uh, a uh, regards to all of the people who might have come and hopefully who will come uh, when, we, when we come back um, and we begin the national tour. Um, I thought we could start with the video that I think you have just to give people a taste uh, just to a fiddler Achendach Meshuggah, man over by wounds in Anatevka is Yeder I mean fiddler Achendach To tell you the story of uh, my involvement with the Yiddish fiddler on, on uh, Yiddish fiddler and my work, I must begin with telling you a little bit about my parents, uh, Yussel and Chanim Latik. Um, my father, Yussel Joseph, was a writer, a pedagogue, a longtime educational director of the Workmen's Circle, the Workers' Circle now called, which produced music festivals, tours, as well as maintaining the Folkspina, the longtime theater company founded in 1915 as a branch of the Workman Circle. My parents loved singing, they loved music. My father was an amateur mandolin player and my mother was a pianist. Um, my mother born in East New York in 1922 and my father born in Prussia, Poland in 1918, both raised with Yiddish as their mother tongue. They raised me with Yiddish uh, as my first language as well. And uh, my house was full of Yiddish song. Uh, my parents would have late night musical soirees where the leading Yiddish performers of the day would come and visit and sing into the late hours. People like Sidor Bolarski, Masha Benya, Ben Bonus, Minna Burn, Freda Lilifschitz, later later years, Emil Gorovitz and his wife. My father in his role at the Workman Circle uh, was known as the address for Yiddish in the United States as most of the public performances were generated from his office and from his imagination. My parents had a column in the Yiddish forward, Pearls of Yiddish Poetry, where they would encourage readers to send in remembrances either in text or in recordings my mother would get hundreds of cassette tapes a week of songs people remembered. 
and uh, it was my parents' job, my mother's job, to identify the provenance of the song, to remind the reader of the full song, uh, who wrote it, who, who first performed it. And my mother had this uh, encyclopedic um, memory. Basheva Singer called um, my parents the, the Sherlock Holmes of Yiddish song because of these thousands of uh, inquiries that came to their to, to my home. And in the next slide, you'll see the, um, the song books that they published, uh, that mo many of the songs that they collected were then eventually published. So my father would bring up home all the latest records that would come out in Yiddish. The next slide, please. Uh, and it was in 1965 when the Yiddish version of Fiddler was produced in Israel after a successful run of it in Hebrew. They recorded uh, the record and the record arrived in the Bronx as everything Yiddish recorded would pass my parents' ears and awareness. And I don't know if I had already seen the English version, but most likely it opened in 64. I imagine I did, but the music was already very familiar to many American Jews as it spread like wildfire when it opened on Broadway in 1964. Uh, in community settings and the Yiddish summer camps, we started to present these Yiddish words to Fiddler. While the Yiddish words of Fiddler spread through all the Yiddish summer camps in America, a full production was never uh, done in America in Yiddish. The first production in Yiddish was done in Montreal by the Montreal-based Dora Wasserman Yiddish Theater. Uh, my, my work in the theater, having musically directed off-Broadway and summer stock English productions, led to my position as the artistic director of the Volksbühne later named the National Yiddish Theater. And it kept me thinking of what shows I might be able to produce in Yiddish that would bring an audience. It was after several productions of, and the new home at the Museum of Jewish Heritage that, that I thought of producing the Yiddish Fiddler, a Fiddler in Yiddish. I understood having produced theater in New York that in order for me to present this iconic musical, in Yiddish, it would have to be presented with the same professional standards as if it was being presented on Broadway, as most people had either seen a Broadway production or a touring company production, or certainly the film. Um, in, in slide six, in, in fact, when we first announced that we were going to present Fiddler in Yiddish, the New York Times ran, ran the story, and we started to get inquiries from actors, designers, directors from all over the world, literally part interested in participating. I had worked with Joel Gray um, some years before, and when I was considering whom to direct our Fiddler in Yiddish, I consulted with Hal Prince, the original producer, and Sheldon Harnick, the, the lyricist with whom I had also worked. In 2014, the Volksmina produced a 50-year birthday celebration for Fiddler, where we gathered over 100 past alumni, cast members from original Broadway productions and the movie, Topol flew in from Israel um, to, to celebrate the 50th anniversary. Um, slide, next slide, thank you. Um, how Prince had worked with Joel, uh, that's Joel and Liza Minnelli, of course, uh, had worked with Joel in, on Cabaret on Broadway and uh, gave, me, gave me his hechsher, uh, Hal, Hal Prince, when I asked him what, what he thought of, of uh, Joel as, as a possible director. And I wrote to Joel and I, I telling him about our plans to do this first Yiddish production um, first time in America and wondered if he would be interested. And I asked him if he would either be interested in playing Tevya or directing. Um, he wrote me back immediately, let's talk. And we had, we had uh, coffee sometime soon after. And uh, he told me that he thought the time had passed for him to play Tevya, but he was very interested in directing because um, he knew the production very well. Uh, he was invited by... Uh, Hal to Prince to go to Washington in the in the previews before it opened in New York 
So he was intimately involved, uh, in, 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 had an intimate knowledge of the of the play. And, uh, but he said to me, I don't know Yiddish. Um, how's that, how, how is that going to work? And I was surprised because of his yichas. We know that, you know, as uh, the Mickey Katz chair, uh, Mark will tell you that uh, Joel's father, you know, was the great Mickey Katz who, who uh, gave the world, you know, incredible Yiddish parodies and uh, besides being an incredible cl clarinet player. Um, but uh, Yiddish was not, in, you know, was not a spoken language in their home. Um, and uh, we met and uh, he told me about his relationship with Fiddler. Um, and uh, I explained to him that we would, we would have no problem with him directing, even though he didn't understand, he didn't, you know, speak Yiddish. Um, and uh, that we would have plenty of coaches around to coach the Yiddish, uh, to make sure that the Yiddish was authentic and um, and and uh, and perfect. Uh, in fact, in the rehearsal process, and I'll get to that a little bit later, he would direct the scenes in English first with the actors um, to get the truth from the actors. Most of our actors, and it's, uh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, did not speak Yiddish. So um, they, they, he wanted to get the truth in the scene in the Yiddish, in, in, in English first. And then after that, we would do the scene in Yiddish and then we would correct the Yiddish pronunciations because there are different uh, emphases uh, in different places in the Yiddish. Um, he was excited. Joel, Joel was excited and he came to the theater at the museum. Those of you who know our theater at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, we were blessed to be uh, the theater in residence at the Museum of Jewish Heritage now for five years. Uh, it, there's a pretty, it's a beautiful jewel box of a theater with 300 seats um, and just gorgeous uh, theater uh, that uh, he came and fell in love with. and. He started to call his designer friends, you know, all Tony Award winning uh, designers to come down town to see the theater and to imagine um, a new production of Fiddler in this, uh, in, in Yiddish and in this space. And they were all intrigued, of course, by the idea of it. Um, I also knew instinctively that announcing Joel as our director would bring another flurry of press, which it did, but I had no idea what to expect. For Forbes picked up the story in March when we announced and we were flooded with calls from actors. We received over 2,500 inquiries for, from actors about auditions. Uh, when we finally posted auditions, we were, while we were looking for 26 people, we finally auditioned over 700 people. 26 people, for those of you who know Fiddler, um, is a very, is, 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 the, is basically a bare bones uh, um, cast number, but because of the size of the stage and because of budgetary reasons, we, um, we, we, limited at 26. When we moved uptown, we, we added a few. Um, if you could go to the next slide. Um, so this is uh, Stephen Sky Bell, our, 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 our Tevya. Uh, the most difficult role, of course, to, to cast was that of Tevya, who is practically on stage uh, for the two and a half hours of the show. We saw many Tevias, including some who might be considered uh, box office names um, until Stephen walked in the room and impressed us with his audition. Uh, he sang a little bit of If I Were a Rich Man in Yiddish, Venech bin Arotschild, If I Were a Rothschild, and um, really wowed us with the reading. And we were, I remember the excitement in the room of, of the, those of us sitting at the table. And I asked him where he knew his Yiddish from. And he said, well, uh, because it was clearly something 
that he had spoken or worked on. He said, I don't really speak. He said, I, I, I studied, I studied Yiddish. And um, he actually did study Yiddish uh, and, and uh, with his brother, actually. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and he also said, he also said, I had always wanted to be in the Yiddish theater. And I thought that was, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't, I thought that there was a line, you know, that would someone would say, but I, I, his credentials and experience show that he had played in, in the recent Broadway revival of Fiddler on Broadway. He was a seasoned Broadway and Shakespearean actor. He, he actually teaches drama at Yale. Um, and, uh, when when in when we when we first met, I asked him, "What about that? What about that statement that you said during the auditions about always wanting to be in the Yiddish theater?" He said, "It was true. I I I, I was a student of theater, and I, I I knew the role that the Yiddish theater had in America. And uh, being you know growing up Jewish in Lubbock, Texas." Uh, and, uh, you know, hearing Yiddish on some level and studying it, it was really something that he wanted to do. And so it was, um, it was our luck that we uh, found him. Uh, during every rehearsal, you would see him going over his lines as he understood that it wasn't just his lines that he had to know. He had to know everyone's lines and understand everyone's lines. Um, actually, during before every performance, you would see him come in two hours early and speed run, um, speed speak all of his lines just for himself. Um, there's a lot to say about how we presented this piece, which is usually performed with 40 people in the cast down to 26, but a, and a lot had to do with our choreographer, Stash Kimyach. If you go to the next slide. Um, Here's a picture of, uh, um, if, if, you, if you can go to the next slide, if, yeah, no, that's the beginning, yeah. So the, anyway, the next slide will show a picture of the auditions, there it is. So that's Stash at the Mira, and this was a group of men coming in, and the woman in front is Rosie Jonetti, who was the dance captain also turned to be turned out to be our um, Chava. Um, so this 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 was part of the dance routine, uh, the auditions that would come. In the next scene, you can get your next picture. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, you get a picture of uh, one of one one of the uh, dance. Uh, well, the, not, not this one, but. Anyway, so this is the this is a picture of Joel at, yeah no stay stay on that one thank you, um, this is a picture of Joel at the, our first uh, rehearsal. Um, I, I just I just I just wanted to just go back a little bit and talk a little bit about Stash. Stash was um, had been the choreographer uh, in many productions. If you can go just just go back a little, just go back to the previous slide if you don't mind. If you can, thanks. Yeah, so that's again that's Stash. Yeah, so Stash um, was recommended to us by the Jerome Robbins Foundation, who we we had to go to the rights holders, of course, uh, of, of all the creative rights holders of Fiddler, to get permission, and the they were very interested in the idea of the Yiddish Fiddler, and. Um, uh, Alan Greenberg at the at the uh, Jerome Robbins Foundation recommended Sash, who had been in over 1,500 productions of Fiddler as a dancer, then as assistant choreographer to Sammy Bays, who was Jerome Robbins' assistant. So uh, there was a real there was a real uh, continuity from the Robbins uh, choreography, but Stash, um, you know, is very well versed in Eastern European. Uh, dance and uh, wanted to bring a more uh, an authentic feel, more authentic feel to the dance as well, while keeping much of the iconic uh, Robin's uh, incredible choreography. As I said, the audition process took about a month, all of April 2018. 
Uh, my associate Muttal Didner and I prepared recordings of the selected songs with the Yiddish and some scenes in Yiddish for people we would eventually call back. At first our auditions, we only heard people sing whatever they wanted to come in and do. We were only allowed to give them one line of Yiddish to repeat back. And based on their initial response to that one line, we would decide if we wanted to bring them back. And we posted the material, the audition materials online and text online so they can study. The line, which Muttel Didner uh, came up with, um, was used in our, we re recently used in our recent auditions for the Australian production, which was to open in September at the Sydney Opera House. So this is the line. And you'll see that it, it takes in, those of you Yiddish speakers will take in, it takes in most of the issues of Yiddish pronunciation. So here's the line uh, that we tested them with. Willstu versuchen mein Geschmacken Simmes? I'll do it again. Willstu versuchen mein Geschmacken Simmes? Do you want to taste my delicious Simmes? A uh, stew. Um, so uh, based on, and they would see it. So based on them saying it, um, uh, we would then, you know, um, we would then mark them down as potential. And uh, if we called them back, if they passed the audition in terms of the their dancing and singing and everything else, then we gave them more to do. Um, I'm I'm remembering uh, because they they had to learn the 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 the, the cast had to learn the show in basically three weeks. Uh, we had three weeks of rehearsal in the studio and then a week to tech it. So basically four weeks total from the beginning that they would have to, ma to master, master the Yiddish. Um, re rehearsals began June 4th and we opened on July 4th, 2018. Um, in, uh, to, to get the rights for Fiddler, we started with the Yiddish translator. Um, Shraga Friedman was a noted Israeli director, a uh, native Yiddish speaker. And I reached out to his family and his daughter, Yael, and we met in Tel Aviv in the summer of 2017 when I started to think about the whole project. So you can imagine with a cast of 26, I knew I had to have at least four papas for mamas if you know the, if you remember tradition four sons and four daughters uh, for the sound and um, we we ended up having people double a lot but and it was an extremely complicated stage plot with doubling and costume changes and we had a, a an incredible stage manager uh, cat west uh, running running the show um i think slide 10 i think we're ready for slide 10 which is Joel again. So here's Joel in front. Yeah, just stay on that one. Thank you. So here's Joel in front of uh, pictures of the sets and costume design. So traditionally at the first day of the rehearsal, the, co the designers come and show the cast and crew what the set is going to look like and um, what, and, 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 and the costumes, and Joel speaks about his concept about the show. Uh, the first day was on the stage of the Safra Hall at museum at the museum, uh, and it consist, consisted of a meet and greet. Uh, this is Joel addressing the assembled cast and crew, and I invited Sheldon Harnick, the writer, and Alyssa Stein, the widow of Joe Stein, the book writer, to come and be present there. They lived in New York and I, I thought that they would be excited. And of course the cast was excited to have them there present at this day. Um, and as I said, behind Joel are the, are the renderings of the set designer by all of them are Tony Award winners. Uh, Beowulf Borat, set designer, costume design, Ann Hould Ward. Um, and um, the sound was Dan Moses Schreier. Um, and uh, it was a, truly a magical experience to have everyone assembled and to go through the singing of tradition, which was originally translated as Die Teure, um, but we, ch they, we, we changed it for a number of reasons. Perhaps I'll get to that later. The, the engagement at the museum was to have run six weeks. 
but because of sold out houses and rave reviews, we, we were extended four times uh, and basically sold out uh, the theater for six months downtown. Um, needless to say, you know, when something is selling in New York to that extent, uh, uptown producers start to hear about it. Uh, and, and of course, because of the press that we had received, uh, people were interested. So we had um, a lot of Broadway uh, and off-Broadway people come down to see, to see what the fuss was about, really. Um, we were, uh, the decision to move to uptown to stage 42, uh, uh, which was an off-Broadway venue, as, a, as an opposed to a Broadway venue, proved to be the right decision for us. We were guided by, and, uh, by veteran Broadway con uh, producer uh, Manny Eisenberg, who advised us to go with the producers who were offering us an off-Broadway run, as opposed to producers who were talking about Broadway. It was about responsible financial analysis uh, and it, that dictated that we opened an off-Broadway house which seated 499 seats, one, sh one seat short of the Broadway minim minimum of 500. Um, our theater downtown was 320, so you can get a sense. Uh, uh, e equity, the Actors Union, allowed us a few extra days of rehearsal with actors because we made the case uh, bef besides the three weeks uh, of rehearsal prior. Then we made the case that we were also teaching these people Yiddish at the same time of teaching them the whole show. So I had one musical rehearsal where I met first met everyone in a rehearsal room, and I will never forget that that moment because they had all everyone knew the music of course and studied the parts, but hearing it in the Yiddish for the first time was uh, pretty amazing. Um, slide eleven, thanks. So we decided to create scripts that would highlight the text that they were speaking. Um, so on top, you see the Yiddish transliteration, a fiddle of dach, a rop von zinnen, ha. So that's the first line of the play. Of, and then, then the a literal translation of it. And then in blue, the lyrics by Joe Stein, or if it was a song by Sheldon Harnick. Um, those of you who saw the production and even saw that clip can, will hear that we changed Arab von Zinnen to Meshuga, huh? Uh, I, I felt that Meshuga, you know, being a word that many people would know would respond and it's basically the same thing. It's, it's, it's a little bit closer to sounds crazy. Um, so it, by, by doing this, the actor could really understand every word every word they were saying and um, and uh, and integrate what the original intent was and in some cases you know there there is there's there there are, there are minor uh, minor dif differences um, in the next slide so here is a picture of a, a Sabbath prayer uh, and uh, if you go to the next slide, thank you. We'll go through the text a bit. I thought it would be interesting. I don't know if you can see it. It's a little small, but um, this is the text of the of the Sabbath prayer. Uh, in the music, what I had to do, I had to convince the rights holders that I needed the original uh, files to be able to reconstruct the musical score so that the actors singing would see the 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 words, the Yiddish words and transliteration, and the English word, the translation right underneath it. So those those people who know how opera singers work, they translate every word is translated on their score, so they see it at the same time as they're working it. So I wanted to do that. I don't have a picture of the score, but that's basically what we did. So um, uh, I thought we would. I'd give you a little taste of what Sabbath prayer in Yiddish sounds like. And if you can, I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but if not, um, here's here's the, uh, I don't know if you want to see me or you want to see the, uh, the text. Te 
Jesusa got von Avram. Kommen so Messias schön schnell. Weil es wart auf ihn, das ganze Volk von Israel. Sabbath prayer. In the next slide, you'll see a picture of the. I think I think you see a picture of the, of the, of the cast. So the um, while we stop here for a moment, this was the set, and uh, parchment, and of course in the middle the word Tyra. Um, when I first saw when they first invited me the designers to see the the design of the what. What the what they were thinking, and they showed me this. I I was thinking to myself, that's it, that's that's the whole set, three panels, and that's and 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 then as as they were talking about you know their their desire to feature the text and 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 create an environment where the text where the spoken word and the sing word was was really the star of the show. Um, I was I was very I was. I was convinced, and of course, um, you know, at the end of the first act, spoiler alert, during the pogrom, this this piece of parchment gets gets ripped. Um, our Golda uh, Jennifer Babiak was original originally our grandma Seitel, and the, the Golda understudy. I think the next slide you'll see some pictures of her. When, when she quickly became our goal this, uh, after this. Soon after we opened downtown and uh, we were lucky to have her. This is, this is, Matt, this is Matchmaker, of course. Um, you can go to the next line. This is uh, Jennifer on the left and Jackie Hoffman who played Yenta on the right. Um, next slide, thank you. Next slide. Thank you. Next one. If you remember, they have a, an emotional scene at the end of the of the the show where Yanta is leaving, and that, of course, was the dream. And this is right before. Um, this is the the end of uh, "Do You Love Me." Um, next slide. So we. This is this. This is the dream, and here. We recorded the the show. Um, yeah, that's the dream scene uh, with from a Sarah. And um, next slide, you see us in the recording studio. <clears throat> the strategy for the Broadway producers was for us to close the show in January, after uh, we we ran for six months, take the few weeks to restage and relight and open in early February at the new theater. I think the next theater, the next slide has the marquee, I believe, of the, uh, no, this is still, no, oh, not yet. Okay, so this is Sunrise Sunset. Okay, not yet. Yeah, there's the marquee. 
um, on 40, 42nd Street, which is where we played. We opened on February 4th, uh, 2019, and, uh, um, and uh, closed after 10 months uh, on January 5th, 2020. Uh, at the time of the closing, we had uh, already met and signed a deal with Opera Australia, which was to mount a new production. Um, actually, in February, I went down with the creative team to, as I mentioned before, to Melbourne and Sydney to hold auditions to cast a new company that was going to open at the Sydney Opera House. Um, there was also a there was also a production scheduled to go to China. The Ch China Chinese producers wanted um, to bring our original company, and our whole company was going to was going to go there. But of course, um, we got the letter in the third week in January that uh, due to reasons beyond their control, they would have to postpone the Fiddler production in China. Of course, no one then knew of the virus, but in hindsight, we understood um, that that was the reason. Um, a national tour, as I mentioned, had also also been planned with an opening um, at the Amundsen, and um, and uh, and then and then a national tour. Um, the 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 good news I have to share with you is that. Uh, that is still very much uh, a desire and hope and plan for us. Uh, the Amundsen is, is still committed to uh, hosting us. And um, in the same way that uh, 500 or 600 of you have come in to hear about this, um, the, uh, besides, besides Fiddler being a theatrical, uh, Fiddler, is always, you know, we start out with with uh, with a piece of gold. You know, when I talk about the success of the Yiddish fiddler, I talk about I talk about well, we you're starting out with a piece of uh, theatrical gold. So so, and then to hear it in the original Yiddish, uh, touched a nerve uh, in all the critics that um, that you found yourself, and I, this is what people told me, they found themselves stopping, not looking at the screens anymore. We had super titles, of course, downtown we had them up, up on top and then on, on Broadway we had them on the sides. People stopped looking at the, te at the text, even if they didn't understand the Yiddish because they, they knew what the scene was, they knew a sense of what the song was. So they wanted to get the best sense. So I, I, I speak about the, the, um, the idea that communities around the country, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing another program tomorrow for the community in, in Boca, um, communities where, where wherever there are theater-minded people and, of course, the Jewish population, people heard about our fiddler and, and uh, wanted to see it. So there was a there was a there was a, a, a big tour being planned and we're hoping we're hoping as I as I mentioned in uh, in, 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 in a year or so or a little beyond that to build a national tour that will uh, bring communities uh, all over the United States together um, seeing this our, our, our production of Fiddler. I thought that we could end uh, before we go into questions with uh, singing Sunrise Sunset. Um, and I think, and I have the text, I think on the next slide. Do I? Oh, bef maybe it's before. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So uh, sing, sing, sing with me. Um, No sunrise, sunset by now. Right? Is the 
Das mein Mädel, das Kleine, ist das mein Jüngel, ich sehe. Ja, der Forgive me for not having the words, but you get a little taste of how the this incredible score sounded in sounded like in Yiddish. Zalman, a shame of dank. This is really wonderful. Uh, I think people would love to hear more and more, and uh, conveying this in such a beautiful and touching way. I just really thank you so much. I I thought it might be interesting since you and I've discussed this before, if you might just talk a little more about some of the production aspects um, of the work that, um, uh, I think I, I shared with you that my, my, my take on it was that there was such beauty in the simplicity of, you know, of the staging. And I mean, you addressed that by the fact that, that this production was about the words, it was about the spoken word, it was about the one written word of, of Torah, uh, of Torah on you know on stage but um do you want to maybe talk a little more about you know um you know the economics of a production are such that you know the big broadway production was just not the approach to this and that this was a whole concept that just really re in ways redefines fiddler it was thank you it was it was it, it, it's really a tribute to the work it's really a tribute and, and it's it's a tribute to joel gray whose vision uh, from the start, he understood by coming to the theater that, um, and by, by having 
participated and seeing so many fiddlers that in order for us to do this, it had to be, it's, you know, a unique experience. And that uniqueness actually did come from the work that he did with the actors. We have a we had a wonderful company uh, that um, you know worked incredibly hard to 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 get what he wanted and to master the Yiddish. Um, you know we would have talkbacks after the show sometimes with audiences and people would ask them right away you know how how they learned the Yiddish how they, how they did it and and. Uh, and you had you had you had people who were you know who had no experience with Yiddish whatsoever, and then some, of course, who had some some experience. But the whole production was 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 um, guided by the by the text and the music, and uh, that was what guided the designers in their choices, and of course Joel and. Um, uh, my choices also in in the orchestrations. Um, we 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 went with a smaller smaller orchestra, but um, uh, I was I was able to uh, fill some of those slots with expert uh, klezmer players um, that I thought would give an important. Um, Take on on the Bach uh, score, and uh, that worked as well. So um, basically, that's that's really you know yeah. what what guided us. Yeah. So to clarify, it's Jerry Bach, not Johann Sebastian Bach. Yes. Sorry, um, Jerry. Yeah. Yes, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, I, I, most of the questions are coming in. Uh, this is like a, a, a global conver a global question yeah. that people are saying. Where can people learn about the the tour schedule? People want in Cleveland, Florida. I mean, so, everyone so, wants to see it. I'm so glad. I'm so glad people have asked. So that this is this is how that's going to happen. When you in, go to your local theater, and you write to them and say, "When is when are you going to be presenting the Yiddish Fiddler?" They, they those theater presenters around the country are now deciding. They have a big. They have a. They have a lot of uh, quest. A lot of answers now, as we're beginning to imagine a time. We can't see it yet, but we can imagine a time when theaters will open, um, you know, slowly and then eventually, to the to the point where. So so when when theater when so as theater presenters all over the country are are thinking what they're going to present in 21 and uh, 22 right they are they have a whole slew of big mega broadway hits that are waiting to come that have have stopped so that's the first thing that people are going to want but there, but we know that our fiddler, our Yiddish fiddler, had such a tremendous following that we know that people like them were very grateful that the Amundsen understands it and is scheduling it for hopefully sometime in 22. But we're mm -hmm. hope, hope, hopefully going to build a tour that will include Cleveland, that will include Detroit, that will include Houston, that will include Chicago, that will include all major cities, all major Jewish cities. But as I said, the way to do it is by, by contacting your, your local theater and saying, we want the Yiddish Fiddler. When when are you going to book it? Because well, we're we glad you're you're in um, in, coming Amundsen first because we're going to have you even more so at uh, at UCLA. Yes. Yeah, so um, some really interesting questions uh, that are coming in. So um, can you tell us about the bottle dance? How do people do the bottle dance? Well, you know the I I interesting thing the the bottle dance you know is is you know first of all you know the the boots and the hats are all very specific. And Stash Kamyach, who had done many, many productions, insisted on the right kind of boots for the actor, for the dancers, and the right kind of hats, the right kind of wide brimmed, big, big hats. Um, 
the uh, the process was one of uh, just practice. It was it was uh, there are no tricks. There's no can in there. It's a it's a it's a it's a true moment for all of us, and um, you know for, uh, of of hoping that our four or six uh, bo- uh, men doing it don't drop a bottle. And in our in in the run downtown. Um, I think you know. I, I think I think if 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 of the several hundred performances, if if we had a you know five times uh, or maybe six at the most when somebody dropped a bottle, uh, that was that was it. Um, what would happen is they would just that person would just step to the side and the dance would continue without that person they wouldn't st- they wouldn't start it they wouldn't try it again but it was uh it was a moment it was that moment of tension um that uh the audience felt and we too on the stage felt of you know at that moment hoping that you know it was all going to go well and we had tremendous tremendous dancers so that's that's the secret hard work Heart, good, good dancing, good focus, good focus, um, and hard work and practice. So there are a lot of questions, and you've answered a lot of this about how um, the actors, actresses uh, learned Yiddish. But um, uh, I wonder if you could maybe say a little more about it did how many had a previous affiliation to uh, the folks, Bina, and yeah. by chance did. Um, any of the actors and actresses happen to hook up afterwards? Well, the answer to that is yes, actually. Our, our, um, the, the two people who played um, Huddle and Perchik, Stephanie Lynn Mason and Drew Sigla, actually became engaged during the run of Fiddler. And they're scheduled, they've been putting off their wedding because of COVID, um, but they're they're scheduled to be married. So, so that so that's and, and there was actually another couple that that happened. But the um, the 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 percentage of uh, the number of Yiddish speakers we had about two or three people who we you know flew two, maybe two people considered fluent right. And another, let's say five or so or six, who had been in previous Folksbina productions, so they had had the benefit of working on the Yiddish, but had didn't know Yiddish before. But the majority of the of the cast was coming to it without any Yiddish knowledge, and this is this is a tribute to them. I mean, we, our work we worked hard, but the tribute is really to them, to their ears. Because that's that's how we could tell right away in that you know while going going through seven hundred people and quickly you know how who we felt could do it could after after we gave them more to learn to do it um, I, I have I'm thinking about a, an incredibly funny scene on Friends I don't know the scene but at one point during the Australian editions we somebody came in and tried to read tried to say that line, Willst du versuchen mein, and it sounded pretty much like French, um, you know, and we just did everything we could not to laugh. And then afterwards, someone sh- showed me this episode from Friends where, where you know, it's exactly what they're teaching in French anyway. So I'm just remembering that's, it. So, but it, but it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, it was a, it was a process. And, and my, as I said, my hat goes off to the, to the actors who, worked so hard to get it. So the show already has two uh, shidduchim. Uh, one more shidduch in the show will have a chalik in Olam Haba. So yeah, that, uh, I hope, that. Hope, you get, hope you get one more. Um, so um, some people are asking questions about the theatricality moments, of course. Uh, one of the big uh, highlights when From Sera comes out, um, you know, really, uh, you know, taller than life, so to speak. Yeah. Like, tell us about the theatricality of, of that stage. Well, you know, the, first of all, they, they, Stash and Joel conceived the dream scene to be uh, with a kabuki curtain. So that at that moment when the dream beca- happens, um, a, a, a kabuki curtain would drop 
and they would have dancers in back of it. So the, the stage became filled with real actors and shadows of, of act, you know, of, of other actors. So that was pretty special right then and there and, and took a lot of time to get it absolutely right and, and, and lit perfectly. Um, the, the, uh, our, our from a Sarah, um, uh, uh, Jody Snyder, um, uh, incredible, incredible talent, talent, um, uh, you know, worked with the dance, with the dancers, uh, you know, the, the, the taller, the taller, uh, stronger dance, dance, um, men dancers who would be, the, they would be, they, they would be called the from a bottom. So, because, because she was on, she was on his shoulder, she was on his shoulders. Un underneath this this massive costume, and um, there was a lot of choreography that they had to learn together, and how to walk together, how to put on, how to how to how to ma manipulate the hands. I mean, it was it was a, it it took a lot of time um, to get it absolutely right, uh, and so that it would be honest and real and. Um, uh, they they worked tremendously at it, and uh, so that's that was that's one of the more exciting theatrical moments. So you you mentioned that um, there was uh, the original translation for tradition was to use the word Torah, and there was a a thought process involved to use traditia. Do you yeah. want to talk about that uh, a little sure, bit? Sure, sure. I mean the you know when when we first did the uh, reading. At the first rehearsal, I had uh, Sheldon Harnick was in the was in was invited, and um, he called me afterwards and he said, "What what what is that word they're singing?" And I said, "Well, it, it's it's the Torah. It's the word that uh, Schrager Friedman chose to translate traditia." And he had already spoken to uh, Alyssa Stein, I guess, who told him that, you know, who knew a little bit more Yiddish and told him that that there were there were other words for tradition in Yiddish. Um, uh, and so I I tried to, you know, when I, when I heard his concern, I said, well, you know, there is a word Mesoira, Mesora, you know, which which does talk does mean tradition. And he said, no, 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 there's another word. And because he had already heard me, he had already heard the word traditia. He said, "Yes, let's use that." And uh, so it was my. It was. It was. It was. It was a difficult moment for me because I had already taught the cast, the Torah, and the Torah because it was so central in the concept. Was um, it was uh, is it w we felt it was an important moment for them for us to say it as well. But you know, th those are the joys and and uh, privileges of working with a living composer, Mark. You know, mm -hmm. where you where you have the the uh, you're 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 blessed. You know, I mean, you know, with 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 all of the issues, whatever it is, you're blessed by by having you know one of the creators uh, gu guiding you. And uh, so we we of course. Uh, acquiesced and uh, changed it to traditia. So another question came in that I thought would be interesting to hear you talk about, which is um, were um, some of the translations of the songs harder than others in terms of, you know, the cast to learn or just from what you really wanted to convey? I mean, there's so many fascinating nuances if you know Yiddish for yeah. miracle of miracles to be nisim and niflaot, which is you know so much of it's part of tefillah, it's a part of yeah. uh, Jewish tradition. Um, you know, um, obviously the colloquial American sort of English, you know, to sort of turn that into Yiddish. I'm sure there were a lot of choices. So I'm sure that's a whole hour discussion within itself. But I'm just curious if there are yeah. a couple things I mean, that might come to mind. We, we were excited by the Yiddish. You know, those of us, Matul and I, who were working on the, preparing the, the text, we were very excited by the, by by how, by all the Jewish references in the text, and um, 
and 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 yes, there are subtle differences um, throughout. Uh, we we had to Muttle and I had to really work on most of the score. Most of the score hadn't been recorded, so the 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 main eight or nine songs that were recorded scanned very well, but the rest of the score didn't scan as well. The rhyme scheme didn't match the Bach and Harnick. The uh, there were extra syllables sometimes for a for a sentence, and you didn't want that. So Muttle and I worked hard at 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 finessing the 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 libretto so that it would really uh, match as well as this the Harnick matched the Bach. You know, in the music, we wanted the Schraga Friedman. Uh, translation to match as well to the music as well. So we 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 worked hard at that, and we and and there are, and and you know all throughout the score we we did that. But but uh, yes, the 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 references throughout um, you know are are are, are rich and um, and 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 that's one of the reasons why you know it's it's. The experience, while it's a theatrical experience, it's really a, a community experience, an ex experience for the Jewish community to to kind of get a taste, a real taste of what, um, you know, 19th century, uh, you know, Russia, you, you know, might have sounded like with what what was the you know that that the Shalom Aleichem to hear to hear the the original Shalom Aleichem. Text and and the Shraga Friedman knew Shalom Aleichem, so he used Shalom Aleichem's text within it. the 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 big example, of course, is Venech Ben Arotschild, if I were a Rothschild, um, and um, which you know, uh, instead of if I were a rich man, which we which we which we used. So um um, th this is a uh, kind of like a, a, a an ongoing question with a. Uh, Yiddish speakers and all of our experiences together at Klez Camp and other places, Litfish versus Galitzianer, um, and yeah. uh, the consciousness to, uh, you know, the right pronunciation. I thought maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, in the Yiddish theater tradition is to do something called the Voliner accent, which is a kind of a, a mixture of both. Um, I really, I you know, and 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 uh, I really felt that that. It was important for the Yiddish to be heard with, with the most people being able to understand it. Um, so, so while we wouldn't say "fleisch mit beina" for "fleisch mit beina" anyway, because that's mm -hmm. really a Galiciana um, uh, accent, um, we we opted for um, more of a a what we call a klalspach, a the, the 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 natural, the spoken word, um, more more of a more of a, you know, an eye to 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 how people spoke in Vilna, perhaps, but um, just a more a more literary Yiddish, um, but at the same time following the the guidelines of the Voliner accent, which was, which would which would uh, also make it somewhat warmer. So this uh, whole experience just seems like you've had just tremendous mazel with, um, you know, all the right pieces really being put into place. It's just so amazing to see the uh, response that you've gotten uh, from the long run of the show. The fact that we, you know, had nearly 900 people tonight coming to hear you you know, talk about the show is such a true testament to all the passion and energy and just the, I think just the profound emotional response that not only did the show have, but you, you tapped into a, um, a, an adaptation of a more than 50 year old production. And uh, I just wish you continue mazel. Uh, thanks, with, thanks. We, 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 are, we are hopeful that, you know, we will be able to bring our fiddler to you know the major cities around the country and the world um, as we as the, that experience that you talk, talk about 
was uh, something that people felt uh, throughout, a, a, uh, as, if they were, as if they were seeing Fiddler for the first time, um, as if they were hearing the text for the first time, even if they didn't understand it. There was something about hearing it in that language that, that, that moved people. So. Thank you so much, Salman. It, it's you, such Mark. a pleasure to be with you, to hear about all this. And, you know, a grace of Yashikoach. Uh, really just wish you all, you know, continued strength uh, to really continue the incredible work you're doing and just so inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I just want to tell people that, you know, our website, uh, the National Yiddish Theater Folks Bina website is nytf.org. And um, in the last you know, several months of the, uh, while, as soon as the pandemic started, we've been doing programming online. So we have uh, virtual, pro, you know, programs throughout, you know, uh, Yiddish classes and uh, concerts and some, some, um, some uh, theatrical things. And if you get on our mailing list, you'll hear more about our, our plans with our Yiddish fiddler. So just a, once again, it's nytf.org, right? Correct, right. Is a website. And Nationally I really, and you're doing a lot of special things for Purim this week. Yeah. I enjoyed your Purim sing-along yesterday. It was lovely to see. Yes, on Thursday, we're doing, we're reading the Megillah in Yiddish, the original, the whole Megillah in Yiddish. So that will be fun. That's With super titles. Right. <laughs> That's great.